welcome to all in online course on quantum mechanics for undergraduate students today we are going to discuss about a brief history of quantum mechanics before starting the actual module of this course first i want to discuss with you a brief history of quantum mechanics initially we want to understand how it was started towards the end of the 19th century physicists had every reasons to be satisfied with their accomplishments newtonian mechanics had explained the miracles of the heavens and had reached the in its lagrangian and hamiltonian formulation and apex of mathematical religions maxwell's equations had explained the mysteries of electromagnetism and thermodynamics was a fully developed branch of physics and the source foundation of a thriving technology it is not surprising then that many physicists through that all the questions has been asked and that finding the right answers would be merely a matter of time one physicist who expressed himself in the sense was philip v jolly his remark would be just one of many famous last words if it were not for the name of the student to whom it was addressed the student was max planck he presented at a meeting of german physical society an empirical formula with which he attempted to bridge the gap between the religion's law and the wayne's law of black body radiation the former described the connection between wavelength and intensity correctly at long wavelengths whereas the latter gave a correct description in the limit of short wavelengths planck's formula which was a purely empirical interpolation between the two well known laws fitted the precise measurements that were then available with extraordinary accuracy the inspired planks to search for a derivation of his formula and after a few weeks of the most strenuous work of his life the darkness lifted and an unexpected wisdom began to appear this happened however not until he had been forced to an act of desperation this act of desperation was the assumption that an oscillator could absorb and emit energy only in the form of quanta of the energy that is e is equals to h nu planck's revolutionary assumptions was ignored by most physicists and attacked by some one of the most vigorous attackers was planck himself who for the following 15 years tried to derive his results without assuming 
the quantization of the oscillators. He came away knowing for a fact that the elementary quantum of action played a far more significant part in physics than he had initially been inclined to suspect. He was none other than Albert Einstein, who realized, realized in 1905 the sweeping significance of the assumptions that Planck, who was no revolutionary, had made so reluctantly in 1905, Einstein's conducted the that Planck's determination of quantum is to certain degree independent of his theory of black body radiation. He then showed the Planck's light quantum hypothesis. If generalized by assuming that all light can be emitted or absorbed only in the form of quanta of the energy, the quanta of energy is nothing but the E is equals to H nu. Explain not only Stokes law of fluorescence, but also Linard's recent measurements of the photo effect, Einstein's equation E is equals to H nu, of course specifies only that light cannot be emitted continuously. It was not initially interpreted as meaning that light quanta are discrete particles that are emitted in a well-defined direction. This is final conclusion was drawn by Einstein in 1909. In quantum mechanics and the atom, today the term atomic physics and quantum mechanics are almost yet the application of the quantum hypothesis to the theory of atomic structure was slow in coming. The idea that atoms are the building blocks of all matters has been firmly established during the 19th century. However, the structure of the atoms remained a complex history. Without any notion at all of the atom structures, it was of course impossible to apply the new quantum hypothesis to what we now consider its most proper limb. The situation changed suddenly in 1911 when an English physicist Rutherford discovered that all the positive charge and almost all the mass of an atom are concentrated in extremely small nucleus surrounded by an almost massless negative cloud. In 1912, a young Danish physicist Nils Bohr met Rutherford and one year later he had abstracted from Rutherford discovery a theory of the structure of the hydrogen atom. Bohr's model of the hydrogen atom had the electron circle. The nucleus is allowed orbit whose angular momenta were quantized. The energy difference between two orbits was to be equal to the energy of the photon emitted in the transmission, in the transition from one orbit to the other orbit. During the next 10 years or so, Bohr's theory was generalized and refined, and by 1923, it had been built into a complex system of postulates and empirical rules that is known as the old quantum theory. This theory was capable of explaining most of the absorbed features of atomic spectra 
qualitatively and of explaining some of them quantitatively all the while it was obvious that it was not the real thing quantum in quantum mechanics the next step forward was an entire hypothesis by prince louis de broglie of france he proposed the he proposed based on relativistic consideration that particle should be assigned a wavelength that is known as de broglie wavelength that lambda is equals to h upon p he proposed a quantum theory that did away with all such classical concepts as velocity and location of the electron in an atom that else could not be measured in any way and replaced them with relation between observable quantities the algebraic rules that connected the observable heisenberg invented as we went along in september of the same year his colleagues max bohr and pascal jordan pointed out the heisenberg rules were the rules of matrix algebra a mathematical subject that physicists in those days had little reason to study in the meantime strodinger had not been ideal and uh, in january 1926 he introduced the postulates for the transition from classical mechanics to quantum mechanics derived the strodinger equation of the hydrogen atom solved this equation in essentially the matter that has been presented in this course one month later in february 1926 in another his work he mentions that the perturbation theory of classical mechanics can be extended to quantum mechanics and concluded in first approximation results the statement that the perturbation of the eigen values is equal to the perturbation term average over the unperturbed motion in march 1926 prodinger showed the equivalence of his theory and heisenberg's matrix mechanics the theories that had thus far been developed were non relativistic but the precision of spectroscopic measurements did not allow the small relativistic effects to be swept under the rug the five structure splitting had already been both there some of some to the old quantum theory and in october 1925 two dutch physicists using the old quantum theory explained the splitting and consequence of an intrinsic angular momentum of the electron in march 20 march in march 1927 pauli was able to present a formal theory for this electron spin using matrix notation in the meantime physicists all over the world had gone to work and had applied heisenberg's and schrodinger's ideas to the problem of atomic physics that had been a waiting solution in january 1928 paul dirac at cambridge worked on the quantum theory of electron which required quantum mechanics with the special theory of relativity thank you now we will start in the next lecture 
what is mean by quantum mechanics how define the quantum mechanics or what are the pillars of quantum mechanics thank you thank you once again